We are Fran and Rich. And for the last six years, we've been living and travelling aboard our narrowboats on the inland waterways of Britain. We've been travelling with our two companions, Jess and Archie. Now we also have Percy, the motorhome, to further extend our adventures. So why not tag along and see the UK through our eyes? Last week saw us climb a big hill, see a chandelier in a greenhouse, and we got down to some dirty housework. This week... So I'm on a bit of a mission today to pick up Percy the motorhome. It's a cycle ride, a bus ride, two trains and another bus. Even though it's only about 35, 40 miles as the crow flies, uh, it's a bit convoluted on uh, public transport, but I enjoy it actually. I enjoy the train rides and the buses. Got me a coffee and uh, yeah, it takes a day and then I got to drive all the way back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to go away for a few days and uh, come along with us. That's the mega journey done. Just got to walk five minutes up the hill here. And we're there. It's a bit of a jaunt. It's been five hours now since I left the boat. But uh, it'll be worth it. Here it is. Good old Percy. <laughs> down to South Gloucester, Chepstow, into Wales. So yeah, exciting few days away. Yeah, we think we've got about four or five days. We're not sure what yet. Um, weather's looking good, so it's all good. really quiet night on our first stop here at Ross on Wye and it's a beautiful beautiful town. It's a really good place to, to park the van we've got grass and fields around us going down to the River Wye and a 10 minute walk into town and it's free overnight parking Yeah. and uh, you get that four hours in the day free as well. So. It's brilliant so we're just having a quick walk around we've got to move on uh, so there's somewhere we want to go but uh, here's a quick look at Ross on Wye. Mm -hmm. Really close to the border with Wales, Ross on Wye is a beautiful market town and is known as the birthplace of tourism. After William Gilpin published the first illustrated tour guide in 1782, demand to visit the area grew so much that eight boats were making regular trips up and down this beautiful valley. Everything you need, Fran? Yeah, I've got chocolate and I've got breakfast. And wine. Oh, freebies. Where's my cake? I had been free taster and was trying to choose, and then Rich reminded me that I baked a cake before we left yesterday. Really embarrassingly so, walked out the shop. I ate the freebies <laughs> and then left. Thank you, Dave. Well, we finished our little walk around Ross on Wye. It's absolutely stunning. Beautiful place and it's a gorgeous day as well. So we're going now back to Percy. Coffee and cake. Coffee and cake. <laughs> Can't get 
get any of this on Percy. It's too much stuff. <laughs> so much to see at Ross on Wye. We'll definitely be back. Well, this is something else, eh? It's amazing. So we're just a few feet off of Offers Dyke Pass. Um, the amazing view over the countryside in Tintin Abbey. This tree has got to have special significance. It is marked as a sacred yew. And you can see why. Grown all in between these rocks. And I can't begin to think how old it is. And it just asks to be sat beneath for a few minutes and be quiet. It's lovely. What are you saying? <laughs> Just leave me here for a little while. I'm not quite happy. Well, while Fran's connecting with her mystical self, we'll go and have another look at Tintin Abbey from up here. It's a stunning view. Check that out. Amazing. The path roughly follows the 8th century mound that King Offa had built to protect his kingdom from Welsh tribes. 60 feet wide in places and 8 feet high, it has a trench on the Welsh side to make it even more difficult for invaders. This is why we've got Percy the motorhome. It's given us the opportunity to get to places we can't get to uh, in in the boat, we couldn't. Um, we could have got here by trains and buses, but it would be too much a long day for the dogs now. And there's so many beautiful parts of the country that we won't get to see, um, but we will now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, we're really enjoying this. It's uh, it's just fab. Is all. <laughs> there's some beautiful, beautiful, really ancient trees here. Look at this yew. That's as old as the other one we've seen, isn't it? I think so, it's difficult to tell because you can't get your arms around to measure the trunk. You can't really see where the original trunk is unless you get right down to ground level. And I guess it could be two or three ewes joined together, I don't know. Yeah, it could but be. It is old. Well, some ewes are known in this country to be like 800, 1,000 years old plus, aren't they? Yeah, we've seen one 1,000 years old before. Yeah, and it wasn't as big as that, was it? No. No, when you think that um, Offa's Dyke was built 1,200 years ago, you know, this could be that old, couldn't it? It could be. It's fantastic. Which way? Fabulous night in the car park just behind us, totally free, and we're near Tintin Abbey on the Welsh side of the River Wye. That's lovely, isn't it? It is. It's just um, a little park, a little lay-by car park, and we didn't know this picnic bench was here until this morning because we didn't venture this far down. But it's just a car park, a free car park. Um, there was a little bit of a rave going on nearby yeah, last night. Going on. So, but it was fine because the music, the bass of the music, was just like going to sleep listening to a heartbeat. <laughs> I don't know where it was. It's was obviously down the hill there. It wasn't in the car park. But uh, yeah, peaceful night, nice and quiet. Really busy now with people, climbers coming in with their ropes, etc. There's some rocks to be falling off up there. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going there. <laughs> so um, yeah, we went for a walk this morning on a fool's errand. So we ended up doing a mile down the hill and coming back again because we thought the viewpoint was down there. 
but it turns out the viewpoint is 30 yards from the, I was going to say boat, 30 yards from the van. We can't um, quite get to grips with boats and vans and parking and mooring. Saying things and, uh, like, oh, I've left my phone in the boat, I mean the van. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we've moored up somewhere yeah. and we've parked, so it's all good fun and we're really, really enjoying it. But it was lovely to wake up right in the middle of the wood, wasn't it, really, in the forest. And um, yeah, so what are we doing today? We're not good even quite we're, sure, we're, are we? We're having a quiet one today. We've booked in at a campsite um, just outside Chepstow, um, which is not something we want to keep doing, but we've got to empty the El San cassette that's yeah. full so we booked in for that it's only 12 pounds a night so we're quite happy with that and top up with water as well so but um in all the times we've been out now in percy for about 10 days in total yes over camping, the last yeah. six weeks since we picked him up and i think we've only used a campsite this will be our third time won't it so spent, 10 or 12 nights yeah yeah we've we've hardly spent anything not it's not even a cost thing we just don't want to be surrounded by other mobile homes camper vans whatever um we prefer it's like when we're mooring up we prefer to moor up away from everybody it's the same yeah. with um parking the van up we like to be on our own really and there's some great sites you can get for free and uh, fully legal we don't want to trespass on anybody's land or anything um, but yeah, it's these nice quiet spots that uh, appeal to us. Yeah. So our very first night, uh, we took Percy out to a campsite, not far from where we picked him up when we bought him. And we thought, right, we'll book a campsite, we get electric hookup plugged in, and we'll just test everything works and that, which we did, and if it was fine, wasn't it? But my oh my, next door to us was a family and their child <laughs> on an electric motor, motorbike up and down all around, kicking balls and screaming and shouting. Yeah. So that cured us of uh, that campsite. So yeah. no, I won't be going back there. And often you do get families, uh, they use campsites, obviously, to congregate and have a family weekend away. And, uh, you know, it's lovely. It's a lovely thing to do, but we prefer the peace and quiet. So waking up this morning to the, just the sound of the birds under the trees. We had an owl right above the van yeah, last night. Yeah, it was night, noisy, wasn't we? it? Um, and obviously the dogs love this. It's better for them because we can just let them out and have a little wander around, which you can't on a campsite. So, They're getting used to the travelling now, aren't they? Being inside the van. They yeah. hated it at first, didn't know yeah. what to do with themselves. Yeah. But uh, they're OK. <laughs> they're, they're digging it now, I think. <laughs> anyway, we brought our coffee down with us and uh, some oat biscuits. So, yeah. cheers. Yeah, cheers. So this was our camp up for the night. With just one other... With just one other camper van. Really peaceful, really quiet. But the road is now very busy, so it's time for us to move on. Welcome to Carwent Roman Town, or Venta Silurum, as it was known to the Romans nearly 2,000 years ago. This place was once the largest Roman civilian settlement in Wales, but today the town falls on the As we're driving along, Fran loves to follow the journey with a good old-fashioned road atlas on her lap. And just as well, because she found this Roman site of Venta Silurum, a town used for administrative purposes rather than military use. You're going scrumping, Fran. Got apple envy. <laughs> Look at those. Lovely. That's our Roman chariot equivalent in the distance there. Percy, what's his Roman name, Percy? Percy Perseus. Perseus. <laughs> Perseus Peculiar, yeah. So there's pigeons coming out of that yeah. pigeon loft there. Free to park and free to wander around, very much a rarity. We approve. It's mind-boggling, just to think 2,000 years ago these buildings were laid or started and then the village in Wales has been built on and around it. It's a huge new estate just to the other side of this, but to be living so close to all this ancient history, I find Roman history so fascinating. 
but I'd love to live here. Well, that was a nice hour, friend, spent in the company of Tony Curtis and Kirk Douglas. <laughs> I, I am Spartacus. Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't rehearsed, it really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really interesting. So uh, if you're ever down this way, it's um, very worthwhile. Really Definitely. interesting information, yeah. And it's, it's actually nice. A lot of these places are set up as a big tourist industry with kids that kids can buy plastic shields and swords and Roman well, helmets and, and there's reenactments but this is just the ruins and it actually um, leads you to imagine more what it was like doesn't it mm. I like it but it's, it's difficult to envisage isn't it that why would they be here is it just protecting their domain from the Welsh or well the Silures were the original tribe that were here yeah um, and I guess perhaps they were big enough for the Romans to pay of interest to, I don't know. Well, the uh, Roman name for this place was Venta Silurus. So, um... So that's that then. Well, we're at the campsite. Not many people here, just a tent and another van. We have company. It's not bad, it's quite rural. In the distance you can see the Severn Bridge. And you can just about see the River Severn Estuary in the distance. Well, we're taking a little walk from the campsite through this lovely village of Mavern or Mavern. And it's gorgeous. So we're going to have a walk down to the estuary, which is about a mile away. The Severn Estuary and have a look at the two bridges that are there. We had a very peaceful night, didn't we? Yeah, it's a lovely little campsite. Yeah. It's really basic, isn't it? And it's, there's so many similarities, but differences as well between this and the narrow boat. So waking up, looking out on the water and the canal every day is obviously really peaceful and beautiful. But we've just woken up absolutely next to a field of sheep this morning and grass all around us. And it's, uh, it's just a different feeling, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's fabulous. Who's this? So who's this geezer then? This He's not a geezer, he's a very handsome chap. And he was um, King... Goodrick? Tudrick. Tudrick, King Tudrick. And he was uh, the, the Celtic King of Gwent. But he abdicated to live a hermit's life at Tintern Abbey, which we saw the other day. And then a battle happened and a war happened and he um, had to come out of being a hermit and lead a battle. What an up and down life. We thought we leaded an adventurous life. Yeah. I think I'd well rather done. lead this life than his. I think I'd rather be a hermit than a king in battle. I'd rather be a hermit than a king. Yes, I would. <laughs> so we're going through into St. Tudric's church and see if it's open. And apparently the bell tower is in need of restoration. And there are 89 steps you can climb to the top and admire the view. So if the church is open, I have a mind to do that. Apparently built on the resting place of St. Tudric, there has been a church here since the 6th century. The current building was constructed by the Normans and later renovated by the Victorians. Well, sadly, the uh, tower was closed, so we couldn't do the 89 steps to the top, which is a shame. That is Mathen Palace, which used to be home until 1705 to the bishops of Llandaff. That there is 
Where are we? <laughs> and what do we know about Bishop of Landas? Absolutely nothing other than it's a beautiful single petaled flowered dahlia. We used to grow it. In fact, I had a really stressful winter when a customer had a prize one that used to belong to his dad and I used to have to lift it every, every winter, store it, bring it back to life in the spring and every spring I used to sweat tears waiting for the first <laughs> shoots to come on this dahlia tuber. So yes, thank you, Bishop. It is a lovely, lovely <laughs> flower though. Right, let's continue this walk down to the estuary. It's one thing about this life of ours is we always get distracted, don't we, by things on our walks. And that's just the reason why we do all these walking. And it's these little treasures of our country, I think, that are hidden, hidden away, hidden corners. It's not necessarily on the maps and it's not necessarily in the tourist guides, no. but we just seem to come across them. And um, yeah, it's good, we love it. And this field has got some ominous footprints in it and uh, oh. it's a, there's a bunch of cows around, I can yeah. just oh. feel them. And what happened to you two days ago? Oh, we were up at uh, Tintern Abbey and there was some long horned cows, they're only young ones but their horns were like a foot and a half long and we, as I walked past with Jess on the lead trying to uh, just avoid them as, as much as we could, he did this with his head and hit me with the tip of his horn right in the hip bone here. Could have been nasty, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think they, they were only frightened because we were approaching them with the dogs, but they were right by the kissing gate on the footpath that we yeah. had to get past. They looked quite calm and we weren't actually that frightened of them until they nearly tore your belly yeah. open. <laughs> but we did get through. Yeah, they well, we had to wait, didn't we, for them to move off. Yeah. It was a bit nervy to say the least <laughs> and uh, I've got the scar to prove it. What is it with us and cows? I don't know we get so many messages from people saying oh they're only being inquisitive or well, be inquisitive with your horns somewhere else <laughs> not in my midriff. <laughs> <laughs> days gone by we'd have coveted that pile of horse poo wouldn't we Francis? <laughs> We'd been knocking on yeah. doors saying can we help ourselves? I still do but I also covet the land to go with it so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've taken a bit of a diversion where we oughtn't to. We've missed the path which obviously goes across the, that cornfield there or maize field. So uh, there's no sign to say it's a public footpath which it should be. But, uh, here we go. I've got the Ordnance Survey map on my phone, so um, it's pretty accurate. So we'll just pick up this path, which is round here somewhere. So this is where the path should be, and uh, little bunny there. Just yes, come on. It's all prickly for her. I know. Oh, she come out. Dr Livingston, I presume. <laughs> so we fought our way through that maize field and the path, you can just see the estuary in the distance, follows the line of that uh, hedgerow. So here we go. Might as well let them off, hun. Archie, come here. Come here, this is barley. Field of barley, I think. Heading towards some breweries, probably. Stay. Well, it clearly Stay. isn't a very gotcha. well-trodden path, but it is a public footpath nonetheless, and uh, we have every right to be here. <laughs> Someone's happy. Oh, there she is. Tides in by the look of it. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's a long drop. <laughs> a long drop. What are you going to do, Arch? Can't you get through? Oh, you'll have to stay there. Oh. 
I'm going over, I'm not going through. Mushrooms, Fran? Yeah. And they look like, what did our parents used to call them horse mushrooms? I don't know. Because they used to grow in the horse fields and I'm absolutely sure they're edible. Well, I'm not absolutely sure because I'm not going to pick them. <laughs> but um, it's very tempting, isn't it? They yeah, look like really lovely mushrooms. But Well, they won't be on my breakfast plate there's, tomorrow. There's only two mushrooms that I'm confident enough to eat that I know can't be mistaken for anything else. So and that ain't one of them. No. The River Severn estuary is one of the fastest and turbulent estuaries in the world, with a tidal range of approximately 50 feet and is nine miles wide at its widest point. That in the background there is the original Severn Bridge crossing, opened in 1966 by Her Majesty the Queen. And this is the Prince of Wales crossing carrying the M4 between England and Wales, opened in 1996. Oh, nice. It's a bit squelchy, I think. <laughs> you can't believe that some intrepid narrowboaters actually navigate this river. Coming from Avonmouth near Bristol, all the way along under both bridges to Sharpness, to the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal, where we are at the moment. They've got to be mad. It makes our little trip down the River Mersey more like a park pond. <laughs> we won't be doing it. We will not be doing it. Well, what do you think of the walk, Fran? It was a lovely little walk. Not the prettiest across the fields. It's no. a bit stubbly. But the beginning and end were beauty beautiful. And really peaceful at the estuary, despite yeah, the motorway noise. Lovely. Well, this has been a lovely campsite, hasn't it? It's been gorgeous. There was one tent and one other motorhome last night who have now gone. Um, and it's pretty basic but it's what we like there's um, toilet waste facilities and fresh water and that's all we need that's how we like it it is it's fine just to get rid of the rubbish top up with fresh water and on we go again I think we'll sit and have coffee and biscuits in the van yeah I tell you first. what we need is some deck chairs isn't it we haven't got any deck chairs to sit we haven't in. got there's lots of things we keep thinking but we're just trying to do it slowly just to get the right things now yeah if we really um, need them and everything that's obviously expensive so we just just wait and get what we need indeed some caravan and motorhome storage over there and farming ephemera over there and the field wasn't that flat was it so no. you've popped it up Popped it up on those. In fact, uh, I popped it up risers. on Chucks. You did. Goodbye, campsites. It's been fab. You enjoying driving, Percy, friend? It's lovely. I like. I love sitting up high. I always have done. Like sitting in high cars on little trucks, but. Um, it's wide, it's a bit daunting, and the rear view mirror is a camera on the back, so that takes a little bit of getting used to. But it manoeuvres really, really easily, it's really easy to steer, and um, yeah. Next week on Floating Our Boat, we continue our journey ever deeper into Wales. Thanks for watching and so glad you made it this far. Please visit our website for more floating our boat bits and bobs.